Right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Stacy Wallace, who is in East Texas. How are you doing, Stacy? <laughs> I'm doing great, John. It's great to be here. Absolutely. And, uh, and Stacy is author of the book Fueled by Fire, Becoming a Woman of Courage, Faith, Influence, and uh, you also, um, you know, you also coach and consult people in the same vein. Warriors don't retreat, they reload. Um, and this is what we're going to talk about today is peace and profits, how to build a purpose driven, highly profitable life and business that you love. So, Stacey, let's get straight into it. A lot of people I, I hear, I think since the pandemic, right, there's been a couple of buzzwords mm -hmm. that have suddenly become very popular, right? Authenticity is one of them. Purpose driven is another. And uh, so let's look at the purpose driven. What do you mean by that? Because sometimes I feel like when some people talk about it, it's kind of nebulous or it's a little bit of a bumper sticker. <laughs> right. Well, it, you know, anytime people start to jump on a bandwagon of something, it probably means that they're doing it as a me too perspective for us. Over 35 years, we've raised up companies into the hundreds of millions based on the North Star principle, which means identify what matters most to you and then make your time schedule. We talk about time expansion, make it matter in your time allotment. And so when we talk about a purpose driven life, a purpose driven, highly profitable life, it means doing that without forsaking your peace. My husband and I both, we have been um, elite entrepreneurs. We've had uh, C-suite uh, activity for the majority of our career. We've started companies from scratch and scaled them. And what we find is that bigger is not always better. Uh, in fact, if you haven't learned how to keep your North Star really intact, your why, uh, your core values and what we call culture values, which is different than co core values, um, it's easy to make money, but it's not easy to make money, pro profits and peace. Uh, we coach a lot of executives and leaders that are really good at, at making millions or even hundreds of millions, but they're not real good at doing marriage and they're not really great at raising kids. And so we talk about the big seven F words, faith, family, finance, fitness, freedom, focus, and fun. And if any one of those seven pillars somehow defrag, what happens, it's like a snowball effect to other areas. And so we really uh, encourage folks as purpose is, is really the, the essence of why you create a company, why you're on this planet, why you feel like it's important for you to be an influencer or, or a motivator, even a CEO, uh, getting away from your North Star or your why, you'll quickly get away from the peace zone as well. Yeah, you know, that's that's fascinating. And I think uh, and I think maybe the pandemic maybe did in some ways, if there was a silver lining to it, maybe it gave people the opportunity to take a step back for a moment, because I feel like we live in this very strange culture today with social media and all these other things and mm -hmm. instant access to information. And so everything is instant. Everything is a distraction. Everything is uh, uh, is very short term. And and it seems so to be so at odds with what you're talking about. And therefore, to find your purpose and really understand the why of what you're doing, you have to kind of take a step back. And the pervasive culture doesn't want you to. No. And, you know, so I'm a I, do you guys follow me on social media or anywhere you'll find that I'm a very strong faith based leader. And and so I my North Star is not making money, although we've made a lot of money in our lifetime. It's not becoming popular, although we've been able to have great popularity and, and launch multiple books and programs and have tens of thousands of people work with hundreds of thousands of small business owners. None of that brings you peace. Uh, in fact, it might give you accolades and it might give you a bigger ego, but it doesn't under it doesn't undergird what you do with a with a with a peace factor. And so for me growing up, you know, I used to be a country music singer and <laughs> did some pretty amazing things in that area and, and awards, uh, competitions, sales, they never equate to something that gives you more than success. You can have success, but all of us have an inner longing for significance and significance doesn't come from what you achieve or what you acquire. It actually comes through your spirit of generosity, through servitude. 
And so in my faith, that's what I really believe. I don't believe I'm here to win. I don't believe I'm here to gain. I believe I'm here to serve. So my, my dear friend, Zig Ziglar, I got to travel with him for 12 years and spent a lot of time yeah. with the family. Um, he always said, you can have everything in life you want if you help enough other people get what they want. And, and much like the word purpose-driven, that can become a cliche. What do you mean help other people get what they want? It really is being a selfless leader, a leader that thinks less of themselves and more of others. It actually is what makes a great salesperson. You know, I've raised up sales teams into the hundreds of thousands and the best salespeople are not those that are the most charismatic. It's those that understand how to listen. Those who seek to understand and not just be understood. Those who, who talk to people, yes, often, and maybe talk to more people than others, but they don't just talk to sell, they talk to connect. And we call it cognitive resonance. A lot of people have heard of cognitive dissonances, which mm -hmm. is when you have two conflicting thoughts. So you, you yeah. talked about people going through a uh, pandemic. Uh, on one hand, a, a thought might be, you know, I've got to increase sales. I've got to talk to more people. But the con contradictory thought might be, yeah, but there's, you know, there's some really good movies on this week. So mm -hmm. I, while you got all the want to, cognitive dissonance is when you don't have the will do. It's the same thing yeah. as... Uh, here in Texas, we've got a place called Whataburger, and you can be thinking, I'm going to lose 20 pounds before summer, and yet you drive by a Whataburger, and it's like, but man, that cheeseburger would taste good right now. That is cognitive dissonance. When mm. your belief system is, I want this, but my belief system is that this is more important, and they contradict each other. Contradict each other. Well, cognitive resonance uh, is actually... In sales, it's something that allows you to have greater peace because your pursuit is not sales. Your pursuit is neurocoupling. Your pursuit is alignment. It's connection, deep and meaningful connection with the people that you're talking to. And so these are things that I believe because of the pandemic, people have had to step back and go, it's also why there's such a great resignation right now. So many mm -hmm. people going, I don't want to just have a job. I don't want to get caught in the squat of having a job that all of a sudden gets shut down. I want to do something I love. I mm -hmm. actually want to, I want to travel. I want to get in an RV and I want to be able to work in an RV from anywhere in the world or in the United States. And so those are things that require you to really rethink what matters most, what's resonant with your core values and what's dissonant with your core values. Yeah, no, that's fascinating. Oh, I mean, if you buy your RV, you probably just have to sit in it in your driveway now because you can't afford to put gas in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> well, very true. We have a we have a fifth wheel, and we were blessed in 2020, uh, uh, three months before, actually in January of 2020, uh, we sold everything we had. We gave our money to the poor. We fed a lot of people, 10,000 people. We just felt this really major, uh, we were supposed to do a wealth transfer and, and just give everything we had, uproot from all systems. It was crazy. Everybody thought we were crazy. And then January, we bought an RV and we said, you know what, we're going to spend a year just traveling around. We didn't know that COVID was going to hit. Mm -hmm. And so three months later, COVID hits while well, everybody else was locked down. We were in the mountains. I'm a big fisher person, so we were fishing. And uh, it's an amazing thing that uh, even, even gas prices, if, if you really want it bad enough, sure. you'll find a way to make it happen. Even if the world is screaming, the sky is falling. If your North Star is intact, you'll find a way to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I agree. So when how do you advise people to really uncover their why? Because I do feel that this mm -hmm. is something that I think it registers on an intellectual level. People say, yeah, that makes sense or a cognitive level or whatever. Mm -hmm. But actually, it, actually uh, putting it into action or figuring out what's the first step in this process. I think people are quite lost often. I agree. You know, I hear so many people say, I don't know what my purpose is, right? And your purpose and your why, if you lose your why, you lose your way. John Maxwell said that. And so when you think about that, and I have a lot of people that we coach in something called magnetic sales mastery. And, and I find when sales leaders or when business leaders or CEOs, uh, they get what we call the, I call it uh, the 
it's like an F word, a bad F word, overwhelmed, right? That mm-hmm. word, it's actually not a real word. It's a, it's a psychosis of a belief system that you can't handle anymore. I'm overwhelmed. And so what happens is I find when people start using words like overwhelmed, anxiety, stress, pressure, what's happening is they've actually detached from their why. And so they've become busy, but not necessarily effective. And we, you know, I teach something called the 1% method, how to get 1% closer every single day, 1% micro progress. This is what my, my Ted talk is about. 1% micro progress towards that which matters most to you. So that could be a, a better relationship with your kids, right? So what is your North Star? Is your North Star relationship with your kids? Probably not. It's probably one of the steps towards whatever your North Star is. My North Star is just to reflect God daily. In the marketplace, I want to be love. I want to be compassion. I want to be authority. I want to be justice. I want to be uh, I want to care about the poor. I want to feed the widows and the orphans. But I also, I'm, I'm a shark in business. So I also want to go and uproot those things that are wrong. And I want to be able to conquer new territory. Um, all of that has to be aligned with something like everything that I do. I want to do it so that I can leave this planet a better place than when I got here. I want to leave a room, a boardroom, an office a sales team. I want to leave them better uh, than when I got there. So when people say I've lost my purpose, most people confuse their role with their purpose. So Mm -hmm. I I coach a lot of women. And so a lot of women executives, and they spend a lot of their years trying to just be a great mom or a great businesswoman and a mom. And so they get wrapped up in the role of motherhood. And, And if I were to say to them, what is your purpose? Oh, I just want to be a great mom. I'm like, well, that's not really your purpose. That's a role because there'll come a day when your kids are going to leave the nest and they're not going to need mommy anymore. They're not going to need you in that role. So what happens? Do you lose your purpose or do you just change roles? Well, your purpose has to be bigger than your job, than your profession, than than the role that your doctor, lawyer, uh, singer, dentist, Mm -hmm. those are roles. But your North Star, your why has to be something that's bigger than success. It's got to be about significance. See, if I say my number one North Star is to reflect God and my mission is to raise up warriors to wake up and step into their divine mandate and do what God's called them to do on the planet. Well, I can do that with my kids. I can raise them up, help them to wake up and step into their divine mandate. I can do that as a doctor. I can do that as a coach. I can do that as a leader. So it has to be something bigger than just the activity of sales, just the activity of dentistry. And when you identify what your North Star is, now you can go, okay, if my North Star is I want to reflect God daily in the marketplace. Now, why do I want to do that? Well, I believe that's why Mm -hmm. I'm on the planet. I believe that that's why I have the talent of sales. I have the ability to produce wealth. I have a a cognitive ability to, to be able to connect with people. Why? Because I think people need a better connection of heaven on earth. We have so much anger and animosity Mm -hmm. and division today. I think we need more people who say, wait a minute, not what is my ability, but what is my calling? Why am I really here? And to identify that, you've really got to get past just what you do into why are you here to do it? Yeah, no, that's absolutely absolutely fascinating. And I totally agree with it. And I think, and this runs contrary to the way I think a lot of people compartmentalize, you know, you compartmentalize your job, compartmentalize your Mm -hmm. family, maybe your social, whatever it is, you compartmentalize all these areas of your life. But from what you are saying is like, if you don't have that guiding North Star that unifies all of them, then you're, then no wonder Mm -hmm. you're kind of, you know, at odds, even with yourself. Well, yeah, I have a lot of people that come and they say, I have so many ideas of what I want to accomplish. And so they don't have clarity but they've Mm -hmm. got, I I call it shotgun mentality. And what my job is, is to help them get rifle focus because you can have 15 aspects, let's say a 10 lane highway, but you've got to begin with something that you can focus on so that you get that 1% micro progress. Well, when you have shotgun mentality, it's like your North star is somewhere in there, but you know, let me give it as an example for 
um, a business leader. You know, you may be playing the role of dad and you're also mm -hmm. playing the role of husband and you're also playing the role of businessman and you're also playing the role of uh, little league coach and you're also playing the role of humanitarian. And so on any given day, that can look like a spider web. You know, mm -hmm. you're jumping to the right, you're jumping to the left, and then the wife calls, and then then your kids are saying, Dad, 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 you got to be at the game this weekend. And so you feel like you're shotgun. You feel like you're all over the map. Well, when you have a North Star clearly defined, it sits on top of, imagine a linear line from your North Star down. And instead of everything being spread out, it's all in line with your significance, with your higher purpose. So now in a day, I can begin to what we call time expand. I can put things into a time blocking system and then I can allow collaboration to give me time expansion. So it might be something like I've got just so many hours in a day, 24 hours in mm -hmm. a day. But if I partner with uh, somebody and I say, you know what, I'm not going to be able to be at that meeting. But if you'll do that meeting for me and bring me the notes, I will be able to be over here at this game with my son. Well, now you just took 24 hours. And you expanded it to 48 because you're tapping into somebody else's 24. Mm -hmm. And th that's why I believe unity is so important. I think it is a, it's a curse on humanity for us to divide from each other. We're dividing from the very power source that in, in, I believe God gave us is, you know, John, when you and I do this right now on a podcast, your ecosystem and my ecosystem is collaborating. So my mm -hmm. following and your following, we, we massively expand are following. Well, you can do that with time. If you begin to see that my North Star, if I can align with people who share my North Star, that they want to do good for humanity, now I can share my 24 with them and they with me. And we can actually, you know, the scripture says one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. That is why I believe there's a curse against uh, unity because it keeps us fragmented. Mm -hmm. But if ever we could come into agreement, that's the power of alignment. You know, a lot of people, they go for the cell and that's the assignment. But I really encourage people don't go for the cell, go for the deeper connection, go for collaboration. You may get the cell or not, but every person knows thousands of people. When you go for the connection, you don't just get assignment, you also get alignment. And when mm -hmm. those come together, that's when you get progress. Yeah, no, I, I I love that. And I think, again, it also, um, you know, there's been a kind of uh, stereotype perpetuated, you know, especially, you know, in, in, in corporate, not to even say corporate America, corporate global mm -hmm. at this stage, is, you know, whereas I have to be able to, it's like, I don't want to reach out for help. I don't want to ask people because, you know, I have to be in control and I have to show that I can do everything. And this kind of, and, and that undermines so much um, when everybody is kind of, you know, wary of collaboration because they feel like it looks like weakness as opposed to the strength that you just outlined. Mm -hmm. It's actually power, you know, and I think when you when you are thinking, well, there's too much competition, I can't share with them my secrets, I can't collaborate because what if they think, you know, really it's pride. Let's just boil mm -hmm. it down. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Even low self-esteem is still pride. You know, what will people think about me? What if I fail? That's still pride. It's the disease of me. And when we have the disease of me, we will never truly engage in the power of collaboration, which is ultimately the, the pathway to expansion. And it gives us the opportunity to do more, be more, help more people when we come together like that. Yeah, no, I love I love that. I think it's I think that's so powerful, and I do think you're right. I do think uh, that there is there are forces working against unity, and you know we live in a, in an awful culture now of you know where people are angry and they just want to to fight all the time. It doesn't matter where you are on the spectrum; like you can mm -hmm. pick a fight anywhere if you want. <laughs> and we have to we we have to move away we have to move away from that. And like as like you just pointed out there, if 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 everybody recognized or identified their purpose, um, then you couldn't really have this level of conflict, could you? No, you know, I, I have this thing where we take leaders in and it's called the warrior vortex. It's a extremely intense leadership development program. I've never had anybody that goes through it that doesn't hit their point of meltdown and crying and grown 330 pound, you know, warrior guys breaking down because in each one of us, there's, there's a, there's a little person, you know, like for me, I'm a, I'm a strong woman, but there's a warrior in every, I mean, a child in every warrior, mm -hmm. that child probably went through some kind of trauma. All of us, all of us do in some form, some way, 
Um, but here's the most amazing thing. When we go through this warrior vortex, I always, one of the assignments we do in these 90 days is I say, I want you to go tonight and I want you to find someone that you would normally not talk to. Someone that you may judge, somebody that, you know, maybe you're Pollyanna and, uh, Pollyanna and you're, you're pure and, uh, you know, Puritan or whatever. And you see somebody that's totally opposite you. I want you to go to them and I want you to get out of your comfort zone. And I want you to talk to them and say, do you mind if I interview you? I've got an assignment and see how long it takes you to find 20 things in common and, mm. and document that. You know, do you have eyes? Yes. Do you have a family? Yes. Do you have children? Yes. Did you go to school? Yes. It is very easy to find commonality in people, even when they smell different than you, look different than you, have a maybe different economic status than you. When we seek to understand, it is so much easier to find unity versus I expect you to understand me. And that is a powerful example of how in our society, we're always looking for the differences and that creates division. But when we look for the similarities, I think we can find love in any person. We could probably find that connection or what I said was cognitive resonance, mm -hmm. that neurocoupling, that alignment. If more people would do that, not only in sales, but in their family, I can find a million yeah. reasons why my kids and I are not the same. But I can also find a, a lot of reasons why my kids and I are exactly the same. And we have the same same family, the same, we, we all look the same. It's when we seek alignment versus division that we'll really begin to see progress take place. Yeah, listen, that's um, that's fantastic. Uh, what a fantastic note to to end on, Stacey. I love that. Um, all of Stacey's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. I am a CEO of Fueled by Fire. We work with seven, eight, uh, nine figure CEOs and influencers. We help them build a purpose driven, highly profitable life and business they love without losing their peace. I'm also the founder of emwomen.com. Uh, EM stands for Empowering Women. And uh, we rescue and restore the lives of women and girls that have been unfortunately caught in a lot of very difficult situations. And so we we live to give, my husband and I, we've been blessed to be in corporate America and sales for 35 years. And now this is our season of give back. I'm 52 years old and it is my joy to be 49% boss lady and 51% and missionary giving back as much as we possibly can. Yeah, fantastic. Well, listen, then, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom today um, with fantastic insights. And thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you, John.